Hello there, Atomic Unicorn, and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, then hello, skis. If you are a returning guest, welcome back. I missed you. If you're a returning guest, then you likely know that I just took a trip from France where I was there for six months training horses and have officially moved back to Mexico to the town I've been living in for about 11 years now. So, um, it's good to be back. However, oh my, ooh, look at that bad boy go. <laughs> However, I have not recorded on this channel in this town before, and the neighborhood can be quite loud. If you've ever been to a Mexican city, um, I don't live in like a country town. I live in a coastal, pretty loud city. So you're gonna hear roosters, you're gonna hear motorcycles and dirt bikes. You might hear the tamale guy go, ba go by. Um, you might hear a gas truck go by. I'll try to make a point of pointing out all these unique sounds because they're things that are really fun that if you don't live down here, you wouldn't know about this. For example, our gas trucks go by and they play that song. Dun, 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 I got it. <laughs> So I'll point out fun things like that. There's also bright green parrots that live in the mango tree by my house. So you'll probably hear them squawking at some point. Um, right now I can hear roosters next door that are popping off. Um, but otherwise, today's actually a pretty quiet day in the neighborhood, which is blowing my mind because ultimately for the last, I think I've been in this house for four, maybe five days now maybe just four days, I'd have to really think about it. <laughs> um, but in the, in the last four or five days I've been in this house, it's been extraordinarily loud. And I was kind of in my head about it, like, oh my God, how am I gonna possibly do these recordings? Maybe I could wear headphones. I have noise canceling headphones, but I've been told by people that it cancels noise for me, but you can hear everything that's going on around me. <laughs> so I've been tripping. And yet here I am, day one um, of doing recordings and it's, it's going well so far. So that said, I'm going to start back on this channel doing a mystery reading, which was not the highest voted one. I asked you guys what readings you'd want to come next, and it's not the highest voted one, but after I got all this, this table set up with, you know, can ooh, candle, how could I forget about you, my baby, let's light you up. After I got this whole setup going, I planned to do a pick a pile reading and I realized my camera angle is not conducive to a pick a pile spread. So I'm gonna do a couple of these readings, upload them first just to get back out there and then I will do the pick a pile readings. I think I'm just gonna do readings all day today. Like, screw it, let's just have fun in this new home I find myself in. Also, last little notice is I will be offering up paid readings sometime soon. You'll be able to book those through my website, thestardustrevolution.com, which is also going to be launching soon. And that website is going to have a variety of resources, paid and free, uh, to help you through lifestyle illumination and empowerment for your own life across mind, body, soul, and cake, aka money. I think personally that the four pillars of modern living are more than just mind, body, soul. We also need to consider our finances because our lives are so intertwined with that. Unless you're going to just pop off and become a sage, a monk, a traveling monk, essentially homeless, taking food in exchange for stories or, you know, old school Buddha it. Um, we all are dependent on creating a lifestyle, a financial lifestyle that keeps us afloat, right? And so it's important to me and it's been a huge pinnacle in how I decided to adult with my life. Uh, if you don't know, because I don't think I've talked about it on this channel much, um, at the age of 22, 23, somewhere around there, fresh out of college, I got a corporate job in downtown Los Angeles, and I was like, oh my god, look at me, yay me, you know, kind of like the dream, living the dream, as it were, and within four months, within three months, I was having panic attacks, anxiety attacks, I hated my job. I was coming home frustrated, angry, didn't want to be touched by my boyfriend, like even a hug. I was just miserable. And so without telling anybody, the fourth month I started applying, somehow somehow I googled how to escape the rat race or some funky sentence like that. And I stumbled upon the term freelancing and remote employment. And then I stumbled upon two websites, Elance and Odesk, which I believe Odesk purchased Elance 
some time ago, some many years ago, and it's now called Upwork, but that's another saga. So I'm an OG freelancer who knows that, that moment in time. And uh, within 30 days, I got a job that paid more than what I was getting paid in Los Angeles, and I could work from home, setting my own schedule and my own hours. So I quit my job, I went freelance, and I never looked back. About a year and a half after that, my boyfriend at the time, who became my husband, who's now my ex-husband, <laughs> Uh, we were living in Southern California up in the mountains and I was like, why, why, why am I living here? And California just kind of drains the life out of me when I work online and I can live anywhere. And so I told him, you know, I'm out, I'm going, I'm, I need to go somewhere else, whether it's Costa Rica, Mexico, I don't care. I just, I need to explore the world and I need to live in a place that's healthier for me because California is just not doing it. I don't vibe with these people at all. And so we sold all of our things in flea markets and garage sales and moved to Mexico six months later. So I've been a freelancer for quite some time and I've been more than that, very adept at looking at my life, illuminating the issues that I'm experiencing and empowering myself to move past them. Now I'm not perfect by any means. I've been in and out of therapy my entire adult life. And what I do know is that I have I've been diagnosed with CPTSD, I've been diagnosed with depression, a, an anxiety disorder, and possibly undiagnosed ADHD from what I've learned recently, but I don't think that's the case. I think, I think that's a symptom of my PTSD and it's just easy to get confused. So I, I haven't gotten properly diagnosed for that one, but I don't think that'll ever happen because again, when I'm in a good place, I function without ADHD symptoms. And when I'm in a negative place with my other symptoms with PTSD flashbacks and debilitating paralysis and all these other things, then suddenly those symptoms show themselves. Either way, point being, I'm not perfect. I've been in and out of uh, therapy over the years by choice. I've been in and out of good places in my life, not by choice, but by action. And so I personally know what it's like to struggle with mental health and you struggle with my mental health in regards to my lifestyle. And I've gone through some difficult things in my life. I have a rear view of trauma, um, family abuse to friend and mentor abuse to, it just continued through my life. If you come from a background of abuse, and I'm so sorry about this long ramble, but everything is being channeled right now and whatever I share could be helping you. So. Fast forward if you want to, I'll put a timestamp in this for when the reading actually begins, but this is part of it. Um, if you happen to have trauma in your life, heavy trauma, abuse is one form of trauma, but it could also be like if you went to a war zone or if you experienced a really horrific car accident or anything like that, abuse is not the only trauma. But if you've got trauma in your rear view mirror, then likely I would hope you are trying to work through it and get beyond it, but until you do take accountability for your behavior because of it, you're going to keep being abused or traumatized in your life over and over again. So for me, the abuses showed up in sexual abuse, emotional and physical abuse, financial abuse, and verbal abuse. And until I learned, even up till recently, what I'm allowing into my space, it's gonna keep happening to me. I'm gonna keep allowing the wrong people into my life, right? So if you've been on this channel for a little bit, you heard me go through a breakup, a friendship breakup. And that was, what, two weeks ago now, at this point? Um, I've officially blocked her on all accounts. Uh, her roommate's best friend was trying to get me to sit down and have a conversation with her, and I told her, absolutely not, there's no point. She has no desire to have a conversation with me. She just wants to fight and be correct. She just wants to be right. And unfortunately, she's not. Unfortunately, the truth is that she was an entitled, spoiled brat, and she had zero respect for me, walked all over me, has no manners, etc. So I could go on, but it's not important. What's important is that in the two weeks or so that I've cut her out of my life, I've done some reflection on my part in it and what I could have done differently and why things were so explosive at the end there. And I realized once again, I trauma bonded to somebody. She was actively abusing me from the jump and taking advantage of me and walking all over me. And because she was in such a traumatic relationship, at the time she had a very abusive boyfriend and I came from a lifetime of abuse, 
I emotionally enmeshed to her and her well-being, and I suddenly cared more about her than I did about myself in, in so many ways, in so many facets, in so many aspects. And so there were many times over the course of our year plus long relationship where she would get mad at me and hang up the phone on me, or she would say something snarky or nasty to me, or she would just show her true colors. And in my mind, I still had the habit of excusing her behavior and saying, ah, that's just her. Now that I've got some distance from that, I can, I can almost confidently say I will not allow another relationship like that into my life because I'm very aware that sometimes we just need one last straw on the camel's back. You know, sometimes you feel like, at least me personally, I, I felt like I had learned this from my ex-husband that I wouldn't tolerate disrespectful bitches in my life anymore. And then here comes one that circumstances were a little different and so I tolerated her shit, you know? So sometimes we're not as as prepared to learn the lesson as we think we are. We think we've gotten the gist of it, but then the universe provides another opportunity to prove whether or not we have, right? Another example is, let's say, because that, that relationship for me stemmed from my unresolved abuse in my life and not just childhood abuse. Because again, when you haven't healed, especially childhood abuse, you allow that kind of behavior to continue into your adult life and you continue to get abused. I was getting abused by my ex-husband for 11 years because I hadn't established, I hadn't developed the self-worth to say enough of this. And I, I was so codependent on one person in this world, even remotely believing that they, that, that they actually might love me, that I was willing to continue a toxic, horrible relationship because at least that's something, at least that's someone. And that's not a healthy place to be. So that's just one example. Another example could be if you experience a horrific car accident and you happen to be the driver behind the wheel. This is a story about my ex-husband. He was the driver, fell asleep, was driving too fast and almost killed him and his friend in high school. And by the time I met him, he still thought it was cool to drive like a maniac. He thought he was showing off because look at my driving skills, right? Unhealed shit multiple times in our relationship he did things behind the wheel of a vehicle that could have gotten us killed and it wasn't until maybe the last year of our relationship that he finally confessed his eyesight was so bad he couldn't actually see what the words on a sign for an exit off a highway was until he was maybe like 20 30 feet in front of it which is not good for the speed at which you are driving. So his erratic driving behavior was not even because he's an erratic driver by nature, but because he's reacting in a split second because that's the moment he sees that's his exit and that's what he has to do. And all of this for him came down to his own ego. He hadn't addressed the fact of the guilt and the shame that he had for almost killing him and his friend in high school. So he hadn't taken responsibility for his own weaknesses. And so to the day I left him, he's a horrible driver. So it doesn't have to be abuse abuse like my situation. It could be something traumatic that you just experienced and you haven't resolved yet. But what goes unresolved, what goes unaddressed will keep showing up in your life. And so it's important to me to consistently find resources that work for me to address the issues that keep popping up in my life that I have not clearly dealt with. And so that's what the stardustrevolution.com is going to have for you guys is resources that worked for me, systems that worked for me, programs that worked for me so that you as well can get into a, an aligned and healthy place in your life. But I wanna say this because I think it's important. I'm very anti-mentor, uh, coaching, gurus, leadership. And it's not because I don't like a good leader because I love a good leader. I love someone who is humble and empowered to guide people forward. Someone who can take accountability for when they're wrong, but who also has the strength to say, I think this is what we should do, who here agrees, and is diplomatic about it. However, a lot of what I see online is toxic leadership where people are saying, I have all the answers, I'm the only one you're gonna learn this from, I've got the, the magic solution, and these same individuals are people who delete comments of negativity towards their pro products and programs from people who have taken them and purchased them. And they're the same kind of people who don't seem to recognize their toxicity in a moment. A good example of this is a woman that 
really wanted me to pay for her services. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that. That's a group of ATV tourists who are about to go into the jungle up here and explore various movie sites. The town that I live in, I'm just gonna keep dropping hints. If I haven't said where I live, don't comment if I have. If I have said it, do not leave a comment saying, oh yeah, we know where you live, bitch, you live in this town. Leave it as a mystery because I think this is gonna be fun. Um, the town that I live in, in Mexico, has filmed so many movies over the years um, one of which is extremely popular is, is like a cult favorite and uh, they do these tours to go into the jungle to explore the location that was that was filmed for that so either way if you could hear that that just passed right by my window um, anyways I don't care for those kind of gurus and leaders but one of these women wanted me to take her business course back in the day and I did a private session with her a half hour free session just as like a clarity call and she hated pretty much everything that I wanted to do for my business. I wanted to sell cheaper products for easy access from anybody, any walk of life. And she was like, no, that's underpaying. You have to do high ticket valued stuff. And I was like, well, I don't align with that. And she was like, well, then you're not the client for me. And I've said, okay, parting ways. And I just saw yesterday, because I haven't been following her for years now, but somehow she's popped back up in my feed. And I just saw her posting something that was saying uh, the year that she was trying to strong arm me into working with her, which would have cost me $4,000 or roughly that amount, is the year she burned herself out doing one-on-one -on -one work for high value clients, high ticket price value clients. And she hated that alignment with her business and she really wished she hadn't done it. And she talked so many other business leaders into doing it and she had a regret with that as well because so many of them got burned out and yada, yada, yada. And I was just sitting there like, yep, that does not surprise me. That's actually exactly what I anticipated, but I didn't think it would happen. I, I wasn't like I was sitting here all these years, like just waiting for that shoe to drop, you know, cause I wasn't, but that's exactly why I didn't want to work with her because it seemed like it was too much. She was asking too much, pressuring too much and forcing a narrative of how she thought business should happen. At the time, I believe this girl was 25 years old, right? I will admit I'm a bit of an ageist when it comes to leadership. I don't like you being too old, like the US presidents being like in their 60s, 70s, whatever. I think like, nah, take a seat. But I don't like you being too young. I don't value, you have to be extraordinarily eloquent and high integrity with your speech for me to find a youth in their 20s worth giving my money and my time to for leadership. There's only one person I've seen at all who I think is just mind-blowingly intelligent with what she says and how she wants to guide the spiritual consciousness community. I forget her name. I'll try to remember it and share it in another video, but she is just mind-blowing with the words that come out of her mouth and the clarity she provides and the insight, and it's just so, so insane but she doesn't sell her services one-on-one -on -one high value ticket prices. She knows what I know, that she should be offering it as accessible to as many people as possible. So she writes eBooks that are affordable. She does workshops that are affordable and she does public speaking that's affordable so she can reach as many people as possible. So what you should know about the Stardust Revolution when it's launched and when I start offering paid services is that first off, there will be a lot of free resources. I want to see you succeed and usually that means you need to be able to put in the work for free first and demonstrate that you have an interest to follow through for yourself. Second, I'm not a leader, a mentor, or a guru in that capacity. I am not here telling you this is how, this is the only way to fix your life, this is the only way to succeed, this is how you should do it. I'm here to provide illumination for you on your path so that you can see what the best way forward is for you. So really it's about providing you with self-empowerment tools so you can solve your own life's problems. Part of that is going to be a tarot series, a tarot reading series where I'm going to detail everything from how to choose decks, how to shuffle, how to connect intentionally to what energies, how to cleanse your space, how to read the cards, how to get intuitive with your readings, etc., etc. Um but yeah, there's going to be a lot of accessibility points so that I can help as many of you as possible moving forward. And last but not least, I will be opening up 
paid readings with me. I'm not quite sure when. I'm hoping by the end of this week I'll have that set up, but I, I have no guarantees. <laughs> I thought I would have been doing my first reading last week before the weekend, and it's Tuesday now, and I didn't, so. Oh, yes, there is a sixth, it's a seventh. I've been in this house exactly a week. Okay, I've been in this house exactly a week. There we go. I know I, earlier I was saying four or five days, but I remember now today's May 7th and I moved in May 1st. So we're looking at seven days. A week exactly. Oh, you guys, synchronicity seven is one of my lucky numbers. It's like arguably the luckiest number for me. Um, so yay, seven days and I'm doing my first set of readings. Okay, this was the longest channeling ever. Um, but <laughs> for those who stuck it out, uh, yay! And for those who didn't, let's get down, let's get down to spirit. Okay, um, so blah, 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 rewind. This all started because I wanted to talk about trauma reactions and healing the self from the past. When we have not done, even if we have done the work, here's the tough part about spiritual healing. I've done so much work. I could just go on and on about the spiritual therapeutic work I have done to heal my shit, to be able to lead a better life. However, there's a difference between awareness and responsibility. I can choose a better word. Awareness and discipline. That's what I want to say. There's a difference between I know my shit and I know what I've done and I know what I need to do and then the discipline to actually follow through and do it. And sometimes we go against our awareness, our discipline goes against our awareness and we sabotage our own wins. A good example of this is the guy I was seeing last year that I really thought we were gonna be something. It broke my heart when he ended things. It was a massive rejection out of nowhere, rug ripped out from underneath of me, it was just horrible. But I'm out and away from it far enough now to look back and realize he was not my end all be all. He was just a fun thing at the time and I let myself get carried away. There were so many moments when I thought to myself, well, this is fun, but he's not my forever person. And I know that he's a nice guy. It's a good first step back into the dating arena, but this is not gonna be the thing that ends up bringing me lifelong happiness. And instead of listening to that and being disciplined by that and letting him go as soon as I knew I should have, I continued humoring the relationship and having him feed me a narrative of wanting me when I, I could tell he didn't and I could tell I didn't want him to the extent that when he finally did end things I felt devastated because I was doing everything right and I still got rejected I got rejected when I was going to reject this guy like it was such a weird fuck up on my part but it's one of those things that I knew better my awareness knew better but my discipline wasn't there and so heartbreak this last friend I just got rid of. I knew better, but my discipline wasn't aligned, and so I got fucked, you know? So there's a difference between knowing how to spiritually evolve and then actually doing the work to do it. It's kind of like if you've ever struggled with addictions of any kind, be them substance abuse or like food binge eating addictions, you know it's not good for you, but the discipline to actually go sober or to actually get on a healthy diet for yourself and to stop eating sugar or whatever it is for you, that's the difference between evolution and regression. And if you're not doing that work, that's when we start re-traumatizing ourselves. And so when they say take accountability for your actions, nobody deserves to be abused, of course. But especially for me, this helped me heal from my ex-husband. When I look back on it, all my anger towards him abusing me I can now shift towards myself because I knew it was problematic for so many years. Within the first couple of months of dating him, I had tried to break up with him so many times because I knew he was abusing me. But I didn't stick with that, with my discipline. So I allowed myself to get abused. That's the honest truth of it. And I hate that that has to be a truth for so many people because I've been in traumatic situations. I'm going through it with my parents. I'm estranged from both parents, but I keep letting them back in and giving them a chance to maybe heal the relationship and they keep re-traumatizing and harming me. It keeps bringing up more PTSD symptoms for me. And at the end of the day, all I can do is take accountability for the fact that I keep letting them do this. I keep opening the door to them. Why am I doing this, right? That's just like stupid. So 
what we don't heal, we allow to continue happening to us. And it's, it's tragic because it seems like it should be so simple. I know two plus two equals four and therefore it's always four, but somehow we end up messing up the math with a lack of discipline and we'll come out with two plus two equals five or three and be like, wait, what? This doesn't make any sense. How is this happening again? And it's because we're not practicing the discipline. We're not practicing the discipline, right? When you have homework, it's practice. That's all. You don't get good at something by just thinking, oh, I'm going to be an all-star volleyball player. And then you just don't practice. You have to practice. And so when we're talking about trauma and its impact on our lives, we have to take accountability for where we are or are not showing up. We have to take accountability for what we know we should be doing and whether or not we're actively doing it. And this is a funny part too, this devil card popped up as well. I, when I talk about the devil on this channel, uh, I'm not somebody who has firm, solidified beliefs in anything. You'll hear me talk about esoteric ideologies, theological ideologies, any of it, any of it, it's all darts on a dartboard. And to me, some things, some darts are closer to the bullseye than others, but they're all up there. Flying spaghetti monster, Mormon beliefs, the Hindu Vedas, everything is on the board. Some of them are just a little bit more spaced out. Some of them are a little more, more pinpointed to me, but none of them are so perfect and consistent and predictable that I would say that dart is always gonna hit the bullseye, right? If I take all the darts down and I start throwing again, some of them are going to get closer than others, depending on the angle and whatever, that metaphor aside, <laughs> I don't have any specific beliefs that I live by, but I do have ideas. They are flexible and fluid, and I'm learning to understand them and relate to them more and more every day. And so when I talk about the devil, Satan, Lucifer, whatever on this channel, the concept I've come to really resonate with is the idea that Satan gets in your mind. This card does a great job of pointing it out. I hope, I hope that's visible. But you see him pulling the strings of this person whose mind is just out of control, just whack, right? They're, they're, they're mentally struggling. And so that's how I perceive the devil coming into your life. I think because the concept is that God gives us free will, I think you have to welcome the devil into your being. Otherwise, he's not allowed to take over your body. And so if the devil is trying to pick and pick and pick at you, I think a good way to do that is to get into your mind with things that have been said, using other people that are weaker as vessels to say things to you that affect you and make you second guess who you are, second guess your worth. And the best way to combat this is to gain self-awareness and practice discipline for your value system, your morals. I'm gonna have this program coming out, The Gospel of You, capital Y-O-U, Your Own Universe. And it's a way for you to connect to your internal guidance system, your spiritual positioning system, as I call it, which is kind of like GPS, right? Your global positioning system is you, a, a system figuring out where you are on the globe and helping you get from where you are to where you wanna be, right? GPS. Your SPS is very similar, but if you're not connected to your spiritual positioning system, then you're just aloof in the wind and things just happen to you and you're very reactionary. And you can get good at controlling your reactions and being more subdued and being calm and charismatic, but you're at that point in life, to my knowledge, from what I've seen, from what I've researched, from what I've experienced, if that's all you're at, you're never gonna get to a place where you have spiritually evolved because you have not learned how to connect with your spiritual side in the physical realm. And that's what we are, right? We are spiritual beings having a meat bad experience. And so detaching from that for the sake of like a corporate job or whatever, what have you, and not practicing a spiritual practice, not finding or having a spiritual practice is going to significantly reduce your quality of life because you will dissociate from your human experience. My best friend is like this. It's the biggest difference between us. On the spectrum of spirituality, I'm all the way up here and she's all the way over here. She does not care. She doesn't have any sort of spiritual practice. She has no interest in developing a spiritual practice. She is just existing. She's a corporate, whatever you wanna call them, corporate junkie, 
loves her job for the most part, makes decent money, I guess, and is living the life in San Francisco. But I fear for her future because I feel like she's just gonna blink and we're gonna be old and she will have missed out on all of these spiritual growth processes. She'll have missed out on the, the, the taste of life. It's kind of like losing your sense of taste and smell. If you don't have a spiritual practice, Whoa, that's a really big bee trying to get into my house. He ain't gonna do it because the door is closed, but there you go. <laughs> when you're lacking that spiritual practice, it's almost like you can't taste or smell in life. Imagine going to eat a cheeseburger and you can't smell it and therefore you can't taste it and it's just sloshing around in your mouth and you're like, yeah, I guess it's a sustenance, right? You don't appreciate the smell of life, the taste of life, the experiences of life. At least that's how I felt. Again, I'm not, a, I'm not a guru, I'm not a spiritual leader in the sense that I will ever sit here and tell you this is absolutely the truth. I don't know, but this is how it feels to me. Anytime I reflect back on my life and I see myself grinding at being an adult and detaching from the things that make me feel spiritually connected, I did not enjoy my life. My depression was higher, my anxiety was higher, my PTSD symptoms were higher. I had less passion than I've ever had in my life. I just my life just sucked it just sucked whereas when I've gotten like this where I've aligned with a spiritual practice where I do communicate to God where I do see synchronicities rather than coincidences where I take more accountability for empowering my spiritual side I'm able to relax and lean into the flow of life and actually enjoy being on a river being on the flow of destiny rather than just fighting to conform destiny to what I want, you know? It's the difference between fight and flow. My bestie is in fight mode constantly, and her well-being suffers because of it. I am in flow mode constantly, and sometimes I don't like where the flow of the river is going and I have tantrums about it because I'm human, <laughs> but for the most part, I have leaned into trust. Like me coming down to Mexico. If you remember my videos talking about it before, I was concerned, right, because I'm dirt broke, I didn't know where I was gonna land. I, everything I was seeing online were not the best looking apartments and yada, yada, yada. And then sure enough, I come back and I stay with a friend in the, a building that I used to live in and right across the street, the owners of this house have one apartment that's upstairs that I'm at, the penthouse, and it used to be their daughter's and her husband's place, but now they've moved to a different part of town to get some distance <laughs> from mom and dad. And so it's literally me living upstairs and this one Mexican family living below me that are super sweet. And I have a bitch in view and I have more than enough patio space. This place is big and comfortable and breezy and airy and well, breezy and airy are the same thing, but it's got tons of light. I mean, it's just, it's a blessing. It's a blessing in disguise. And they took much less money than they could have from me. Um, they're willing to work with me on a security deposit so that I only take out so much per month. So I'm actually sitting good for the next three months financially. I just need to budget and participate in my life correctly. So all the stress I was feeling before was really just anticipation because I knew this was going to work out okay. I just had to work with the flow of destiny. Um, and I don't know how it came off to you guys, but really when I say the stress of it before, it wasn't really stress. It really was anticipation. But sometimes when we don't speak clearly with our words, I was telling my friends, I'm stressing. I don't know how this is going to work out. I'm blah, blah, blah. But I wasn't feeling that stress in my body. I was more like trusting about it, I guess you could say. I don't know. So either way, it ended up working out. And that's the difference between being in that flow state or that fight state. I didn't fight the process. I just got on the plane and I just did the things. And when I got here, I went to Guadalajara with that girl who I'm no longer friends with. And the second we had a falling out, I was like, all right, fuck it. I'm booking a flight and I'm going back. I don't have the money to pay an additional hundred something dollars. I do have the money, but like that's just adding more stress to my life. But you know what? If that's what it takes to be done with this life lesson, I'm done with this life lesson. And 150 bucks later, totally worth it. Totally worth it. I got to reconnect with a friend that I've been friends with for eight years who knows me like the back of her hand compared to this girl who barely knows me. And I got to sink back into realizing who I am as a person and how far I strayed from who I am as a person. So the difference between fight and flow for me that I've noticed in my life is how much I am grinding against the current of life, of destiny, 
versus how much I'm allowing myself to be carried by the river. And if you've ever gone rafting before, I'm from Colorado originally, so we do a lot of uh, whitewater rafting up there. Um, if you've ever done rafting before, first off, for the most part, it's like stupid safe and lazy river vibes. It's, it's not often you'll hit a part of the river unless you're looking to go on some like class, crazy class rapids. I think it's like class five or maybe it's class one, but I think it's like class, class five is the worst, worst of them. Um, unless you're looking to go down that kind of side of the river, you can do miles, like 20 miles of a stretch in the high Rockies as a lazy river and just soak up the sun and enjoy your freaking day. It's magnificent. But either way, when you go rafting, you go with the flow of the river. No idiot is on their raft trying to go the opposite direction and being like, fuck this river, my God, why can I never get there? And that's kind of what it feels like when I see my best friend talking to me about how stressed her life is and how uncomfortable and unhappy she is, but she's doing good. She's got the job, she's got the career, she's got the 401k, she's got roommates in a cute house in San Francisco, like she's settled, she's fine. But you can hear the misery. And you can hear the misery because ultimately she's just grinding. She's going with the flow of her destiny for sure. She's not fighting it, but she's chosen a very difficult route. There are easier routes. And so I'm more focused on the ease and flow of my life. I am more focused on, oops, how can I get things done in a way that is fun and abundant and stress-free? That is my goal in life, stress-free. Too much stress and I am the fuck out of here. So I wanna get an overall read for this mystery read on what we are all dealing with right now in our lives. If you're aligned with me on this journey, then you are likely dealing with similar facets of your of your day-to-day uh, -day life. Even if they're very different, you don't have to live down in Mexico making it as a passionpreneur, tarot reading, all all star. <laughs> I was gonna call myself a weirdo, which is also true, but let's call me something nicer. Uh, you don't have to be living that life. You could be living whatever life aligns with you. Um, but we do have some similarities. We are on the same soul cycle as it is. We are in the same kind of boat. Different different journeys. Same river though, you know. And so I want to see what we're dealing with. Ooh, magician at the bottom of the deck. I like that. What are we overall dealing with? that is really impacting our ability to heal the parts of ourselves that keep making similar mistakes. What needs to heal? What part of us keeps making the same mistakes with the same kind of people when we know better, when we can do better? And that was a long, long, long channeling session. I'm so sorry for that. That's not typical on this channel for me but someone was probably meant to hear it. And I hope that person listened to the whole freaking thing. <laughs> ah. Ooh, let's light this again. I know, I'm sorry, I, I can hear it. You're just like, fuck, speed it the fuck up. Tipa, come on. But I'm your Stardust Godmama and I care about you and I wanna spend time with you. That's really what it is. I'm trying to keep you here so I can spend some time with you. Feel your energy. There's like three of you right now that are proactive on this channel and comments and whatnot and I really I want to connect with your vibes because I want again start a sky mom I want to see you succeed babies I want to see you be good I want to see you with all the success and abundance and clarity and health and happiness and that's really what it is I'm going to say one last thing I still I was just going to say one last thing and then I'm done if you've heard me talk about it and I'm going to talk about it more on this channel and I'm going to talk about it on my website Love to me, oh, and it's got the deck and it's the lovers, that's adorable. Love to me, oh, and it's the eight of swords. This is gonna make a lot of sense in a second. <laughs> Love to me is a disciplined practice of personal welfare. And welfare is defined as the pursuit of health, happiness, and good fortune. So personally, it's my identifier of if someone loves me, how can they love themselves? Do they love themselves? And if not, where are they lacking? Because where they lack for them, they're gonna lack for me. So an example of this is if my friend in San Francisco, she doesn't take care of her health very well, she doesn't take care of her happiness very well, but she does take care of her good fortune. She does care about making money and being stable. So when it comes to her and I having conversations, I know right off the bat, 
that because of my definition of love, when you can show it to yourself, you can do it for others. Because she's not doing it for herself about happiness and health, she's not gonna be able to do it for me. Whenever I talk to her about my happiness or my health, she doesn't have great advice. <laughs> and when I talk to her about my good fortune or lack thereof, her and I have different ideas of what that looks like. And so because she's not showing up the best for her, for her fortune, she doesn't show up the best for me. Because she's lacking so much self-love for herself in a consistent fashion, she doesn't have it for me likewise. Doesn't mean she doesn't love me. She wants health, happiness, and good fortune for me. And I want that for her. But she's not showing up for herself. And so when I bring some of my issues to her, seeking a friend for guidance, I know preemptively don't expect the best advice from her because this is how she's living her life, right? And the same can be said when you think you've fallen in love with someone. How do they perceive themselves? How do they talk about themselves? What are the ways that they look in the mirror and think of themselves? And if they don't have good integrity, good speech, good morals for their own health, happiness, and good fortune, then you can anticipate problems coming into your life with them. How they treat themselves is how they're gonna treat you. So this girl I'm no longer friends with that I just had a falling out with two weeks ago, she didn't care about her health, she didn't care about her well-being, her good fortune. I could slightly say she cared about her happiness, but not really. She was, she wanted things. It was that awareness versus discipline. She knows what she wants, but she doesn't have the discipline to clean up her act to get that. And so she was destructive, self-sabotage across the board in every aspect of her life. It was, it was mind-blowing. And so I look back now and I realize her and I were completely misaligned and of course she was never able to show up in a healthy way for me because she doesn't show up in a healthy way for herself. So knowing that, I'm now looking for loving relationships where someone can look at themselves in the mirror and realize that they've got all this nasty rhetoric that they're telling themselves that's keeping them trapped and they can do the inner work to heal those problems and reconnect with the loving side of themselves. That's extremely important to me moving forward that anyone I interact with has a self-love practice whereby they're aware of the fact that like you don't have to be 100%. You don't have to be 100% with me. There are days where I do not love myself and it is obvious. There are days where I struggle with my health and happiness and my fortune, right? But it's a matter of aligning with people who match the alignment vibration that you're going for. So because I'm pursuing passionpreneurship, that's what good fortune looks like to me. Because I'm pursuing holistic health, that's what good health looks like for me. And because I'm pursuing stable, secure, safe peace in my life, that's what happiness looks like for me. So it's a matter, this, this mystery reading is a matter of figuring out what we are struggling to heal for ourselves in the sense that we keep creating these problems in our life because we're pursuing the same things over and over again. I thought I had learned this lesson, right? I have the awareness of what love means to me for myself and for others, but I wasn't practicing my discipline with it. And so I was letting in that friendship with that girl when day one of being friends with her was toxic. And I knew that, but I didn't want to judge, you know, let her be her, I'll be me. We can be completely different sides of the spectrum and be good friends. No, we could not. She was never a good friend to me because she's not a good friend to herself, you know? You wanna be with people who align with your values and your morals. So overall, what is the message that we need to hear today, God, about what areas of our life we are struggling to accept what we know to be true and practice discipline for it so that we can stop repeating these cycles that cause conflict and trauma? And sometimes we're supposed to repeat the cycle. Sometimes we haven't learned the lesson as much as we thought and we just need one more straw on the camel's back. <laughs> and that's okay. That's, I mean, I wish it was different. I wish we were all better with integrity for ourselves and discipline for ourselves. But I find that, especially for me, I don't have a core family unit that showed me positive self-love and empowerment and unconditional love. And so I have to go extra I have to go the extra mile to provide those things for myself because I didn't have examples of that growing up and I don't have it in my life now and I didn't have it in my life then. Whereas when I see people who had strong family values and core unit, more often than not, they are well-rounded and stick by their value system. 
So if you happen to be like me where you have some estrangement in your life or you dealt with family abuse or anything like that, any kind of, even, even if you're still talking to your parents, but it's a strained relationship or you know you're just kind of like putting up with them, being happy with them, whatever, when you're not really happy, um, those kind of things will bleed out into the rest of your life and cause all these issues because you're not actually healed from the thing that's causing the problem. We need to speak to our wounds, right? I say this all the time, emotional wounds are a lot like if you get stabbed and you don't clean out the wounds, stitch it up and do the healing part. Imagine you get stabbed and then you just leave it there. Bleeding out, blood everywhere, festering, getting gross, wake up one morning to maggots in your side, you know, like, ugh, no. But emotional wounds can be like that. If you weren't raised knowing how to deal with emotional wounds, they get left behind and they fester. It breeds resentment. It breeds self-loathing. It breeds uh, self-worth issues. And, and it ripples out to every aspect of your life. Um, emotional, intimate relationships, friends and family, coworkers, how you feel about your body, how you treat your body, how you treat your mind. I mean, it just, oh, friend, amigo, amiga, atomic unicorn. My 20s were a miserable, chaotic mess of unhealed emotional trauma. And I was working at it every single freaking day I was working at it. And 2016 happened to be the catalyst that burst me open. I've been talking about everything the Me Too movement brought up well before 2016 came around. But I was living with a man who was like, okay, Tifa, whatever you say, like that's, that's your opinion. And then 2016 came around and became this huge thing and suddenly my now ex-husband would come to me and be like, oh my gosh, I just heard Joe Rogan talking about this thing that you were telling me years ago about consent. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> and? But so 2016 happened to be a catalyst moment for me. It was the year I officially got diagnosed with PTSD, which blew my mind because that's kind of a big diagnosis to have. It explains so many of my symptoms. It also connected to my anxiety disorder, which when I don't have PTSD flare-ups, my anxiety disorder also doesn't really exist, which is kind of bizarre to me. I always thought that was just part of my life, but it's not. And when I reflect back on when it developed, it 100% was correlated to my PTSD symptoms really kicking in in my life. Um, so that was a huge year for me. And it pretty much cracked me wide open and put me in a place where now, eight years later, all the work that I've been doing in my 20s has really sunk in and taken root. And now it's just a matter of continuing to water those roots and give them enough sunshine and let them grow into whatever blossom of a human being I'm supposed to be. But despite doing all of that work, despite getting to the place that I am now where I'm the healthiest I've ever been, I still have my debilitations. I still have weak moments. I still have bad days. Um, I still do stupid shit. And... I was relating to a woman in France about this. My God, I'm still rambling, I'm so sorry, but hopefully this is a healing moment for everyone. <laughs> I was rambling to a woman in France about this that I felt my whole life like I've been looking for the one thing, that the one therapy modality that will officially heal me of my wounds. And I finally come to terms with the fact that maybe what I'm dealing with is a really big marble slab and everybody else in the room or everybody else in my life, they also have marble slabs, but theirs are much smaller. And, and or they're just working at a different pace than I am. And so everybody else is healing around me and I'm still sitting here with this big fucking marble statue that I don't know what this is gonna be, I don't know what it looks like and it's taking forever to chip away at and I get exhausted by it. So I stop, I'll take weeks off where I'm not chipping away at this bitch anymore because I'm just tired. And then I have to get re-inspired to show back up to this trauma marble that I'm chipping away at slowly but surely. And for the first time describing it to her, it suddenly made sense that I think that is what I've been dealing with is my life was trauma. I was born into trauma in a traumatic family life with high levels of persistent abuse. Um, complex PTSD is different than PTSD in that the complex part, the CPTSD, the C in, in, insinuates or implies that there are multiple traumatic experiences compounding the person's PTSD symptoms, right? PTSD on its own is usually like there was this experience you had, and it is one, one chunk of an experience. If you went to war, it's that. Or if you had a car accident, it's that. But it's not like if you went to war, got in a car accident when you got home, 
and your you know dog was murdered by a neighbor or something now we're dealing with cpts ptsd you have multiple things that are influencing your physical reality and your physical reality gets in, impacted by debilitating paralysis flashbacks um, dissociation dissociation has been a huge one for me i struggle with that to this day if i don't pay attention i will just lose weeks months years of my life completely detaching from my experiences because it's been a lot so living with that and coming out of it and now integrating it into my life 2016 was fucking phenomenal for me as far as really putting words and concepts together for what my symptoms were and why i was struggling just to exist and even though i know that like I was saying, I still struggle to this day. Things will still become issues for me. They'll resurface, they'll pop up. I have to be extremely disciplined with my pursuit of my own well-being. Because when I'm not extremely disciplined, it's like walking a balance beam and I fall off, but there's nothing there to really catch me. Or I injure myself, um, or I do something embarrassing, or I self-sabotage or self-harm in some way. And it's, it's a nightmare, it's a, it's a fucking nightmare. So, the Stardust Revolution is going to be all about providing resources that do work for me, and specifically for people who are dealing with trauma that has been following them for years. I don't believe in one-off solutions. I've got friends who are EFT tapping specialists, I've got friends who have done, um, I don't know if EVMR is the right, that sounds like a rave thing, but there's the one with the rapid eye movement. No, that's sleep. <laughs> I forget the name of this therapy type, but it's a doing rapid eye motion and, and light, and it's supposed to help with your uh, uh, depression and mental disorders and stuff like that. I've got friends who do uh, antipsychotic medications. I've got friends who are actual licensed psychiatrists. I have friends from all walk of life doing all sorts of therapy treatments and I've tried all of them. None of them have stuck long term. And so that's where I've slowly come to terms with the fact that, okay, when you have things that you were born into an unjust experience and you can forgive and let go for those people, that doesn't mean that the wound goes away. Sometimes our wounds are so deep that they're going to be with you for life. Like my fractured knee from high school. That was a high school basketball experience. To this day, riding horses in France in winter, that knee acts up and it gets sore and I have to ice it and then heat it and then ice it and then heat it and then stay off of it for a little while. But only in cold weather and only if I do too much exercise with it. It'll always swell up and become a problem and it's healed. I've had MRIs on it, it's completely healed. There's nothing wrong with it, but it still becomes a little bit of a bitch to me in cold weather when I do too much is what it is. And that to me is a clear sign that if our bodies don't heal as best as we think, how to can we expect our minds and our emotions to heal like that just because we say, oh, I forgive you. It's not how it works. And especially if you have things like I do where I was a child when I started getting abused. My migraines began when I was three years old from the abuse I was experiencing in my household. Those aren't the kind of things that ever go away. They're things you learn to live with, but they're still going to be painful in certain circumstances. It just is what it is. I've had many broken toes from horses and winter weather, anytime it's too cold, I can feel every single one of those toes start to go numb. Right? It is what it is. It is what it is. So I want to, all of that fucking aside, let's see where we're at with this reading. Oh, dear Lord, you poor babies, that was an hour's worth of channeling. I'm going to post it on the channel anyways, fuck it. But we're going to keep the end of this really fast. We're going to get some clarity as to what it is we still need to heal so that we can stop calling in all these BS problems that we're still dealing with that we just don't need to be dealing with anymore. What is it about us? What part of our own value system, our integrity, are we not sticking with? Ooh, got some swords cards there, so I kind of have an inkling. Kind of have an inkling. All right, I'm ready when you are. Oh, God. God being spicy. Okay, the star card right off the bat. The heart of the matter, the problem that we really deal with, 
that makes it so we fall out of integrity with ourselves is we lose hope for our future. And what challenges us is putting in the work for that. The Seven of Pentacles is all about putting in an effort for reaping a harvest from the fruits that you sow. But what's interesting about the Seven of Pentacles is that by the time the plant starts growing and you're looking at it, you're kind of like, oh, is this even what I want to grow? And because you can't see the little potatoes, the pentacle potatoes in the soil, you're sitting up here like, I don't even know what this plant's going to be and if I'm even going to want it. But who doesn't love a good potato, you know? So really what this is telling me is that we have this habit of trusting and believing that spirit has our back and that we're protected and that we're doing the right things, but we get a little bit lazy and bored with our practice of discipline and so we stop, period. We just stop. But this is good. Our aspiration is the empress. We want to feel empowered. We want to feel glorious and gorgeous and strong in our values. We, the, the empress is all about standing firm in her value system, right? She's all about that self-awareness and the emperor is all about that discipline, but she's all about the self-awareness and living in that self-awareness, really birthing that awareness back into the world. And that's what we aspire to be. She's looking off towards, well, she's looking down, but she's pointed off towards her future. Like that's, that's ultimately what we want. We're holding hope to be, and she's looking up at her like, that's my future. That's what I want. It's the same hair color, the same looking kind of woman looking up at, yes, one day, maybe you want to be a mother and you're not right now, or maybe you have mother wound issues you need to work on. That could be something that you speculate is your issue. Um, or that you speculate motherhood is not something you've really connected with fully that you maybe want to connect with. I know my mother had that issue when she birthed me. I'm the firstborn and she had major postpartum depression and didn't actually connect with me emotionally. It wasn't until my brother came along a year and a half later that she bonded tight to him. So I've been told that my whole life, that my mother struggled to be okay with being a mother when she had me. So that might be for you, might not be for you, whatever. It's a collective reading. I don't know who's watching this. But we're holding firm to this belief system of we can be this, this high value woman, this male or female does not matter. Gender is not important. Um, this is just a uh, energy, right? So we're holding firm to the fact that we really want to be this empowered, compassionate, empathetic creature, but it takes a lot of work and a lot of discipline. And we get bored with that because we're not seeing the fruits of our labor just yet. We're not seeing anything birth yet. This is a hope card and this is an aspiration card. This is who we are now, the heart of the matter. What we need to work on to stop having all these issues pop up in our life is we need to stand steadfast with our spirituality. We need to have a disciplined practice. We need to put hope to the air, hands to God, Jesus take the wheel kind of thing and just trust and have faith that this is where you're going towards because that's what you're aspiring towards. But when you get bored with that work and you don't do it anymore, this is the idle hands card. You're kind of just like, mm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to water the plants today. I'm not going to turn the soil today. I'm just going to let it be what it's going to be. And that stunts our ability to become that empress. The root of this is the Ace of, Eight of Swords popping up again, getting stuck in your own head, really struggling with those self-worth issues. And what's interesting is that these ravens, crows, whatever, um, I don't know how to tell the difference. <laughs> they could be the same bird for all I know. Uh, these birds are not self-inflicted. They come from other people, but we are the ones calling in the birds anyways. People will say like, oh, you're a bitch. And you can let that roll off your shoulders and move away from it. But this implies that it sticks with you. You bring them with you. It's almost like you leash these birds and you bring them with you. And anytime you look at yourself in the mirror, you're hearing back all of these peck, 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 peck of what people have said about you. So you've got to get back into that self-awareness and be disciplined about your own integrity, your own value system. And if somebody is telling you you are X, Y, Z and you know it's not true, then you need to drop that person from your life. Period. The near future is the five of swords. Again, these birds, you're just taking in too much of outside feedback. And this directly shows you, there's this guy over here who is the one birthing out these birds that then fly up and over and attack this guy's mind, right? You've got too many thoughts in your head and they're worries and they're from other people and they're just, they're really weighing on you. But I like this, the recent past was strength. So I see that you're in and out of a wave 
you're in and out of a wavelength. You go in this strength mode where ultimately you have faith and you becoming a, a better evolved person of yourself, but then these idle hands kick in when you stop doing the work and that causes this issue where you have all these self-doubts because okay, if your self-awareness says, I'm supposed to be sober and I'm supposed to be healthy and I'm supposed to be working eight hours a day and I'm supposed to be, supposed to be, supposed to be, but then your discipline's not doing it, you have every reason to be sitting in front of a mirror looking at yourself and being like, okay, all right, kid, what the fuck's wrong with you? Because <laughs> you know better. You know you should be do doing things differently and you're not. But ultimately within your future, with this five of swords, it's other people's judgments weighing on you that really stick with you. Internally though, you're on, you're on an evolutionary track. You've got the judgment card here. We've got the judgment card here. So you're on an upswing. You're on a spiritual growth. This is again, Jesus take the wheel moment. You know, this is you letting go, letting be to each their own to all the same kind of moment. And externally, you've got the page of wands, celebrating yourself, celebrating your gifts, celebrating what makes you happy and just learning to enjoy your life, to throw caution to the wind and to just be in existence, in, in alignment with your existence in whatever way that fits best for you. Our hopes and fears are the fool, I love that, and the near, the likely outcome is the two of pentacles. Looking down at the fool. So you're at the beginning of some sort of journey of self-awareness. Her holding this amethyst is about um, clairvoyance, self-awareness, um, can be about communication as well. So it's that you hope you can weed out these two because these two are the real problems here. If you got rid of all that, this is ultimately a fantastic reading, but you've got this in here and she is also plagued in the mind, it looks like. She's got, she's got one bag in the physical and one in the spiritual with this sun, right? So she's got a grasp of her spirituality and a grasp of her material world, but she's prioritizing the material over the spiritual. You can see the material bag is the one she's showing off and the, the sun bag is more of like, oh, it's, I don't even know. It's not even like attached to me. It's just kind of following me around. She's not really taking accountability of owning both bags. She's choosing one over the other. And typically the two of pentacles is a balance of these two things in the physical and the, in the material world. But this implies more of she's struggling to prioritize what she knows to be true. And this aligns with the near future card of the five of swords. He's struggling to, I mean, look at these, look at these cards. They're both, they're both looking down like that, right? He is struggling to accept what he knows to be true because he's listening to all this external stuff external 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 i'm adding an s in there somewhere external <laughs> he's struggling to let go of these external thoughts and in doing so it's putting the feminine energy in a space where she doesn't know how to accept her gifts and this does seem to come down i love synchronicity and spirit this does seem to come down to a masculine feminine balance right you've got your heart of the matter is this feminine energy your speculation is a feminine energy. Your recent past is a feminine energy, but it's the masculine energy, the discipline, the self-awareness is the feminine, the discipline is the masculine. It's the masculine energy cutting the brakes on this and his hand is shining down towards these two where because you're misaligned, you're not following through on your, your spiritual ritual, rituality. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Your spiritual rituals or your spirituality in general or... It doesn't even have to be spirituality, quite frankly. If you're on this channel, you're likely attuned to spirituality, but if you aren't just yet, and that's a bit too big of a word for you, as far as like, oh, that makes me feel uncomfortable, it could really just be, again, health, happiness, and good fortune. What areas of your life do you need to practice discipline for your well-being? Health, happiness, and good fortune does not imply spirituality in any capacity if that doesn't resonate with you. For me, for my health, spirituality is part of my health. It's also part of my happiness and it's also part of my good fortune. <laughs> so it, it, it covers everything for me. But for some people it doesn't, right? This doesn't have to be about that. This has to be about things in the material world that you could do physically to align with your hope and inspiration for your future. And when you're misengaged with that, disengaged with that is what I meant to say, misaligned, disengaged with that, it directly impacts the experiences you keep having in your life. You keep cycling between these two things because you want better. You want better, 
but then you stunt yourself. You have everything lined up to have greatness, but then you stunt yourself with your own thoughts. The bottom of the deck is the wheel. This is all about destiny. This is all about moving forward. This is about not necessarily karma, but um, kismet, which is destiny. It's just another word for it. So it's all about um, getting on that wheel and recognizing the ebb and flow, the good and bad of life black and the white energy, right? Rolling the dice as it were. She's got the dice around her neck. So it's all about accepting the flow state of life and really getting on that wheel and taking the journey, taking the step forward. But what it seems like we need to work on so that we stop being in misalignment and can realign with what our value system is, is we have to keep doing the work. We can't be lazy with ourselves. We can't sleep on our, our blessings. And we certainly need to cut out all the external stuff because this is the root of the matter and this is the near future so the root is a big one your roots are toxic right now your roots keep bringing you back to this idle hands it's not worth it i don't need to work on it or just dysfunction where you might be working on it but you're not you're over watering the plants rather than watering them just enough or you're giving them too much sunlight you know you got to check your thoughts because ultimately, internally, you know you're being called on this upswing. You know you're being called to rise to the wheel. And I see you wanting to do it. Externally, you're throwing caution to the wind and saying, fuck it, I'm going, I'm on the journey. And you hope it works out well for you. You're hoping, but also a bit of fear here with the fool card, there is a little bit of fear like, well, what happens if it doesn't work out? What if I step off that cliff and it's not a pool of water, it's concrete and I break my head? Well, that's where you got to fall in love with spirit. You have to trust that spirit has you back. You got to almost trust it to the point, at least for me, I got to trust spirit to the point that if I'm going to die because I fall off this, this cliff willingly, that that's what is supposed to happen. I, I no longer subscribe to the narrative that I need to fear any aspect of my life, wherever I am, whatever I'm doing. No. If God wants me to get killed by a cartel member down the street, it was meant to be. It is what it is. I roll with it. I love you, God. Do good work by me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I can't be bothered being hindered by the idea that shit might not work out. It has to work out. And if it doesn't work out, it wasn't meant to work out. And that's say la vie. That's my life. And I want that for everybody, quite frankly. I want all of us to move through life realizing if it's not meant to work out for us, it's not going to work out for us. So I'm feeling drawn to these cards, these star shit, I can't remember the name of it. You're gonna recognize it when you see them. <laughs> this much I know to be true. Stargate is not the Starseed, Starseed Oracle, I think that's what they're called. Either way, I wanna do some of these on here as well, just to give further clarity on what we are supposed to be. Some of these are upside down, interesting, and they shouldn't be. Interesting. But only like three of them. I should have read which ones they were. Either way, let's do some Starseed Oracle about insights as to ooh, what we need to heal on ourselves. And so far, what it looks like is we need to heal this disciplined self awareness. Exactly what I was talking about when I was channeling. I love that Spirit works this out. Our mind, our thoughts get the better of us and we drop off the discipline train. And that just stunts all of our blessings. And we keep doing this cycle with the wheel. You're going to keep spinning around on that wheel until you accept the discipline. And it is what it is. You're not for everyone. Embrace your weirdness. Face your true north. But it pops out. You guys know me. I don't read pop outs. That's a fool's errand for me. Other readers do that. And that's great for them. I do not. <laughs> All right. I want three messages to wrap up this reading and give us some insight as to what we need to heal about ourselves to be able to stop the cycle of repeated pattern of self-sabotage behavior. Whenever you're ready, God, I'm ready to receive your message. Whoa. Karmic relationships, Orion energy, polarity, soul growth, conflict. Okay, so what's interesting about this, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier in this reading when I was channeling. I think I did, the last straw on the camel's back. Sometimes we think We've healed something, and surely I'm never going to have to deal with that again. And then we deal with it again. And we're like, well, what the fuck? <laughs> I thought I knew better than this. And sometimes that's just part of it. Sometimes we have karmic relationships that need to play themselves out on this plane. And I know me personally, I know I said earlier in this video, 
I will be surprised if I ever let another person in my life that's as disrespectful as that girl again after this, but I almost guarantee you I would probably welcome someone in my life like that because I love to give people chances. I am the kind of person who gives you all of my trust and all of my honesty right off the bat. And I let you do with that what you will because I do not like to live with shame or embarrassment or guilt or constriction. I'm an open book and if you don't like my narrative, if you don't like my story, you can fuck all the way off and close the book, you know? And if you take what I tell you and you start spreading it around and gossiping about it to all these people, that tells me more about you than it does about me. So even though I feel like I've healed the karmic relationship, you can go like 20 years not having any more of these shit people in your life. And then one day one pops up and you're not on your discipline game. You allow them and tolerate their space. And then bam, you realize, okay, soul growth. Interesting. So it's part of the process and spirit wants us to know that these conflicts serve our growth. They are for our best interest. And I've been in some really tragic situations personally. And I had somebody in the comments about a month ago who just went on a tangent. I hope she's still with us. If you're still there, you probably know who you are and you're feeling it in your gut right now. <laughs> just know I love you and I appreciate your bold honesty in my comments. And I hope at some point you have come to a healthier space of recognizing tragic shit in our life is happening for our best interest, even though it doesn't feel that way. And I've been there before where I'm like, how can my abusive ex-husband possibly have been for my best interest? Well, when I take that narrative on and I actually look at the relationship, I can see how much I grew and I can see how much his conflict with me, his abuse towards me, strengthened and solidified my value system to where I am today. If I hadn't stayed with him, if I hadn't processed all of those issues, I don't know who I would be today, but I'm grateful for who I am today. And I'm grateful for how much I've worked through and I'm grateful for where I'm at. So I can tolerate it, I can allow it, you know what I mean? Karmic relationships do serve our best interests even when they break our hearts. This girl broke my heart, but I can look back at it and say, okay, I see how I stepped out of alignment with my values and my beliefs, and I see how I grew as a person because of that energy. Then we have whale and orca elders. Share your song, frequency of sound, diving deep. So part of this has to do, again, with this karmic relationships, sharing our song. When we share who we are with people and we open up and we give them a chance to love us, even if they don't love us, it's a good opportunity for us to get comfortable expressing and being ourselves and seeing how people show up to us. I say this all the time. If you ever struggle to ask for help from your friends, family, coworkers, anyone, I tell people all the time, ask for help and allow people to show up for you or not, because that's gonna be the quickest way to learn who someone is in your life and who shouldn't be in your life at all. The last one we have is the blue flame. Ooh, I've never seen this come out before. Spontaneous awakening, activation, integration time. Oh, hell yes, Chrissy. This goes with the wheel perfectly. You are in alignment to awaken further and to activate everything you've learned. It's time to integrate those lessons right now. And perhaps that's a lot to do with this five of so, oh, I've also never seen this card pop out before. The seven star sisters, birthing creations, tapestry of life and expression. Interesting. So you're at a place right now where this was all meant to be. And we have that with the wheel card, right? Whether you got on the wheel and fell off or got on the wheel and progressed upwards is irrelevant. The wheel being there at all means that this was meant to be. And actually, one, two, three, four, five. This is a karmic cycle. Okay, so let's take a back seat here and let me just point out this karmic cycle. Okay, so karmic cycles, when you do a Celtic cross or a major reading with 10 cards or more and you have four cards, I, I usually do it with five cards. So if I have half the spread comes out with um, major arcana cards, that means that whatever we're talking about is a major life lesson for you. It's where you are on the karmic path. And so we line them up and how they came out in order. So we have the star and the empress. This is the step that you are on right now. And the advice for dealing with it. So I love this because you are on the star. You are supposed to be holding faith, having hope, looking to God, connecting with your spirituality. And the way to do that is to get into your divine empress energy. Nurture yourself, mother yourself. You probably have some mother wounds that have gone unhealed, so you've been tolerating some shit behavior from people, 
right? I know I do. That's part of why I put up with this girl in my life for as long as I did, because I was mothering her. Then you have the strength card, which is the next step on your karmic wheel. So you gotta process this first. And you'll notice I've documented a lot of these tarot readings that have these before. And what I notice is when I don't, and when the people I've read for don't process the first step, they keep going back to it. And then once they do process this step, they immediately go into this next one. Karmic cycles are very intriguing to read in tarot because more than any other energy on the table, these ones tend to be the most truthful. Energy shifts on a daily basis. You could read this reading or watch this reading, come out of it completely transformed, and that's that, and none of this applies to you tomorrow. Fantastic for you, that's great. But the karmic one will still exist. This will still resonate with you no matter what. So then we have the fool in judgment. Let me just get all this out of here. Okay, so this is where you are right now on your karmic path. The star card, working on your spirit, your connection to spirit, and the advice for dealing with it is to connect to your mother side, your nurturing side, your compassionate side, but also any mother wounds that you might have need to come up and get cleared out. Because yes, you want to be, I want to be a stardust godmama. I want to be a godmother to all of you bitches, but I have to take care of me before I can take care of the rest of you. If I'm not okay, I can't be okay for you guys, right? And I can't help you be okay. Once this is processed, our next step is the strength card which means that the next step in this journey is going to be the lion and the lamb situation where you're gonna to have to be strong for yourself in your vulnerability. It's going to test you. It's going to be an infinite loop of challenges and solutions and conflicts and resolutions. And it's gonna be kind of a messy little bitch, but if you handle it with the calm, collected energy that God has your back and the lion will not eat you no matter how far into the den you're thrown, you'll come out of that on top. Now these last two cards or anything that comes after this is all further advice for dealing with these big karmic issues that you're going through. So it's overarching advice for all of it. And you've got the judgment card and the fool card. And I love these two because they go so well together in the sense that when you embrace the judgment card, it's like I said before, Jesus take the wheel. I'm letting go and I'm letting God. And that's exactly what the fool card means, does it not? To trust in this new beginning and this new journey that you find yourself on. And that's kind of what this means for the strength card. Once you come out of this, once you've mastered your connection to spirit through mothering yourself and taking care of yourself and prioritizing you and your well-being, then you're going to deal with the next step, which is this strength character. You're going to go from a tender, nurtured, kind of isolated, feminine energy to this, I can now tackle the world. I can be strong for myself and vulnerable for myself. I can bite back and also be calm as a lamb. I can be tender and sweet, but I can also be vicious and loud if I need to. And the overall advice for dealing with that is very much letting go and letting your spirit reconnect with God and trusting that this journey you're on, this new beginning as it were, is exactly where you're supposed to be. So we find ourselves on a little bit of a karmic journey, which is, Super, super fun, is it not? <laughs> How much do we love being on a karmic journey? <laughs> I know I love it, actually. It's a really good sign when you get stuff like that because it means that what you're dealing with is not uh, small-time potatoes or petty. It's actually a really big thing, and that's where this spontaneous awakening, activation, integration time comes into play. Because we've got a karmic wheel happening here, we've got a karmic cycle, you are actively being told to integrate what you've learned. And what you've learned is that you disconnect from your spiritual side through a mother wound or through not mothering yourself. I did not grow up with strong mother figures in my life. And so I have very little insight into how to treat myself motherly. And so I have to work on that in a regular basis. I also have daddy issues. So I have to work on like what it is to be around solid men in my life, you know? But it directly impacts my connection with spirit, my mother's side, my nurtured side, my compassionate, empathetic side. When I fall out of alignment with that side of myself, I fall out of alignment with spirit and I'm completely out of discipline. For the last seven days, well, let's not include today, for the last six days, I've been completely out of whack with how I was supposed to handle myself coming into this house. I expected to be back into readings much sooner, but because I wasn't attached to my spiritual side, because I had disconnected and disengaged, it's day seven and I'm just now getting to it. 
but we're in this place of spontaneous awakening and that is fantastic because that's what this karmic cycle is showing us we're being actively asked to awaken to our spirit and to stop sleeping on our gifts to stop to stop sabotaging what we know to be true for ourselves it is asking a little bit more isolation these are all singular cards you are being asked to isolate if that feels right for you especially from toxic people and in that isolation to reconnect to your spiritual side i think you've probably shared your song you've probably shared who you are with people and you've seen the reaction and the results of that and you've got a blue whale and an orca in here what's interesting about this is that blue whales are notoriously quite sweet and orcas are notorious murderers they are just batshit crazy the more i learn about orcas the more i'm like dear god why have more sea world trainers not been killed by orca whales they are fucking nuts murderers of the sea <laughs> and so that's kind of what this vibe is giving is that share your song but understand that not everybody is able to dive deep with you the deeper you dive into who you are the quicker you will lose who doesn't belong to you orcas do not dive nearly as deep as blue whales do and that's because they just don't belong down there they don't resonate with being that deep they like to be up on the top murdering seals and whatnot <laughs> i have it out for orcas i'm surprised how vicious they are and then we also have the karmic relationships, which we can't forget. That is absolutely part of what we're dealing with right now. All the shit people that are in your life, the people who have caused these frustrations where you get in your thoughts because of things that have been said to you, those things were meant to happen so that you can activate to who you truly are. That girl had told me so many things that are not true about my energy. And she got in my head for a second. I really started to think, man, I am a piece of shit. And then... I got away from her and I sat with it and I thought about it and I thought, no, actually, everything she was saying to me was a projection of her onto me. Literally, the things she was pointing her finger an inch from my face, saying that I'm a bitch who just gets my finger in people's faces and says horrible things about them and she's doing that to me and I'm like, oh my God, have I ever done that? I don't think I've ever put a finger in your face before. That's so immature. <laughs> and that's what happens when you deal with karmic relationships where you're growing but they're not. Now you're dealing with someone who's telling you exactly who they are as if it's you. And you have to be the one who, to discern that's not a truth at all. Nothing you're saying is actually valid towards me. You're just spewing your shadow self onto me. The worst parts about her character, she thought she could throw in my direction and I would take it, responsibility for it and accountability for it. And that would somehow absolve her of being an issue. But I wasn't willing to take it on at no point. She even at one point was like, you're too sensitive. And I was like, mm, well, I actually kind of like my sensitivities. I've come to terms with them and I'm okay with it. In fact, I think you could do to be more sensitive. You're so insensitive. You say all these things that are super hurtful and being more sensitive would help you. And I remember seeing a look of shock on her face, like not shock, shock, but like taken aback. She didn't expect me to take that quote unquote insult in a way that was positive. <laughs> she thought it would like really sting and I was like, mm, no, that's actually a good thing. I'm really proud of the fact that I've gotten more sensitive over the years because I didn't used to be this way. I used to be very strong, very hard. Not like I was brutal, not like I was an ice queen, but it was hard to rattle me. I was so bristled and white knuckled through my life from all the trauma I'd experienced that it was really hard to affect me emotionally. I was just so unfazed by things but it wasn't because I was unfazable, it was because I was unhealed. And now that I'm healed, I realize the things that I should have been completely broken up by, I wasn't because I wasn't even able to open up and receive anything whatsoever. And now I, someone will say something nasty to me and it does hurt my feelings because I'm in tune with my feelings and that's a horrible thing to do to somebody. So it's a good thing to be more sensitive nowadays. But these karmic relationships are here to show you what is not yours to take on? These thoughts do not have to be yours. You should be focused on bringing the spiritual into the physical, merging those paths together right now. So all this external stuff, all these things, all these birds that are plaguing your mind from things people have said, those are not important. Those do not matter. So where you are on your karmic cycle and what you need to heal right now is reconnecting to your spirituality and I, it seems like that's the message that keeps popping up lately in our karmic group but it's because we're being told to birth something we're being told to express ourselves in a magnificent 
way in a unique way with the world and when we get in our own heads about the things people have said to us that disengage us from our authenticity because we suddenly don't feel good enough that's the true problem with our existence it's not the fact that what we are and who we are and what we're trying to do is problematic it's that we're letting people's impressions of us impact whether or not we actually do the thing that we know we're supposed to be doing so i hope this resonates with you guys welcome back i'm gonna do as many readings as I can possibly bust out today for you guys and just keep loading them up. Um, but if there's anything you saw or experienced or anything that I said in this reading that connected with you synchronistically, please add it in the comment section below so that we can all enjoy the magnificence that is spiritual connectivity. Until next time, my friends, love and bear hugs.